and you came across a group of people dressed in a strange way saying things like the so-called African Americans are actually the real Hebrews and the people in Israel are Edomites and the synagogue of Satan. It's time for you, my fellow black men, to know the real truth about your ancestors because you've been lied to. You black men are an Israelite. Deuteronomy chapter 28 proves it. The man begins to string together Bible verses, precept upon precept as they call it, proving that you are indeed an Israelite. But you as a black man have been cursed by God for your disobedience to his laws, commandments, and statutes. At first, you are shocked at hearing this, but this seems to confirm what you thought was really wrong with the black community. It all makes sense now. The black community is messed up because they don't know that they are the true Israelites. You then ask them, how can you be saved? How can you be saved and have this curse lifted? And they respond by telling you, you first need to repent of your sins and then keep the commandments of the most high. You are chosen by the most high and you are an Israelite. You've kept his commandments to the best of your ability. I mean, you, I mean, you abstain from certain types of foods. You kept the Sabbath. You didn't celebrate uh, pagan holidays and you did everything you could to please the most high. But the reality is if you trusted in any of that to save you, you'll most certainly and unfortunately end up in hell. Trusting in the fact that you are chosen by the most high and you are an Israelite. You've kept his commandments to the best of your ability. I mean, you, I mean, you abstain from certain types of foods. You kept the Sabbath. You didn't celebrate uh, pagan holidays and you did everything you could to please the most high. But the reality is if you trusted in any of that to save you, you'll most certainly and unfortunately end up in hell because instead of trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you trusted in your own efforts and the idea that you are an Israelite. Be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Now pay close attention to this part. Paul says, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Uh, let me repeat that for you. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast keeping the law is works but these verses clearly teach and say that those things will neither justify or save you it is only by the faith in the gospel the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ uh, when it comes to your salvation, your ethnicity, your genealogy, your skin color, it means nothing to God. Now, that's not to say that it's not important and that God didn't make you who you are. But when it comes to salvation, it doesn't mean anything. Check out this passage of scripture, Philippians chapter three, uh, verses four through eight. I'm going to read it here. It says, though I and this is Paul speaking, by the way, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, Paul says, I more. And then he says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, excuse me, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And Paul goes on to say, yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them, but dung that I may win Christ. So Paul kind of gives a, a resume of all of his credentials. Paul was a Jew. Paul was a Hebrew. Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was definitely someone who kept the law before coming to Christ. But what does he say? 
What does he say? He says he counts all of that as dung. I mean, Paul was definitely someone who kept the law before coming to Christ. I mean, Paul was definitely someone who kept the law before coming to Christ. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Hakwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren. Salute to you, brethren, your fellow followers and believers, whoever you may be, including the sisters, and Shalom to the elect. So, anyway, I was intrigued by this video, but I'm going to try to make it quick, uh, to try to shorten it a little bit. And I'm going to just hit points. There's several scriptures we can go into, but uh, I just want to bring it through edification and common sense, right? And the common sense part about it is everything and everybody has laws. Even the animal world, the insect world, there's all laws. There's never a, a situation where you don't have laws. Even in society today, there is laws. Now, where they're confused, he tried to map all Israelites together so I think they need to start targeting particular groups who say that now we understand there's a balance to it because technically no the laws not the commandments are not going to save you but technically when you look at the first commandment let's read that real quick let's see what it says but uh, don't follow the practices of the law no that's not going to save you um, let's go to Mark 12 and 29 and when he says it's not about ethnicity, it's skin color. Again, you got to be able to separate certain Israelite groups. Here at Great Millstone, we don't teach it's all about skin color, right? Because clearly Israelites will look like different nations, right? Like that, I was talking to one of the brothers, with uh, uh, Kelsey, Travis Kelsey or something, the football player, right? And the German basketball player, the seven footer, who says his father was so-called black grandfather. So you can't go on that. Okay, anyway, and one of the scribes came and had heard the reasoning together, the reason together, and perceived that he had answered them well, asking him, right, which is the first uh, commandment of all? And Yahweh answered him, and says Jesus answered him, the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, thou shalt love the Lord with God with all thy heart, uh, the Lord is one, the Lord is our God, one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. <clears throat> this is the first commandment. Why is this important? That was the reason why the Most High sent his son, to bring him back to love the Lord through all his, you know, with all our heart, starting with, let me say, the elect, <clears throat> right? He was sent to bridge us back, and through what? Faith. Because you had Israelites who was practicing of the law, was carnally keeping the law, and they were adding to the law and making things up as they go along about the law. And this is why Matthew 23 and 1, the one you call Jesus, had to get on them and say, <clears throat> tell the disciples, do as they say, but don't do as they do. Because they was so-called all about the law, but they wasn't following the law through faith. It wasn't about faith anymore, and this is what uh, we got away from. But as this Christian says, he reads a couple of scriptures in Galatians and so forth and so on, uh, trying to just destroy the law in general. I had a Christian say that the first thing you do is throw out the laws. Of course they would tell us that in slavery. Of course they would tell us that as a people. They want us lawless. And you see what happened when Christianity told us to throw out our laws? Now take a look. Now you got sexy red and Nicki Minaj and Gucci Mane and everybody else, all kind of gangsterism, right? And they got crosses and Jesus on them. Even you Hispanics, yeah, y'all too. You're all lawless, man. Anyway, let's go here. Again, I'll try to make this quick. Romans, let me go to Romans 2. Maybe I'll get some commentary. Romans 2 and 13. 12. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who sin under the law, right, 
will also be judged under the law. See that? Then it says, for it is not the hearers of the law who uh, who are um, it's not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. So Paul is saying the same thing the Messiah said in Matthew 5. Think not I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I come not to fulfill. Now this Christian said uh, we're supposed to be coming in the embodiment of the Lord fulfilling um, the law and everything else. Well the Lord hasn't finished. I don't know why people keep saying that. That part has. But there's a finishing because what does Hebrews 8 say about the children of Israel? Again, a certain ethnicity. What did he say? I will put my laws into their mind and I will be to them a people and they should be to me a God. Children of Israel. That's what it says. How do you get around that? But you know what the Christians will say? That everybody can be, if they just claim to follow Jesus, then they are Israelites. I don't know where they get this stuff from, but they make it up. But anyway, verse 15. <laughs> so it says, 14, watch this. Indeed, when, when the Gentiles who do not have the law, listen carefully, do by nature what the law requires. How is the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature what the law requires? We'll get to that too. They, they are the law to themselves, even though they do not have the law right but this is what it says so they show right that the work of the law is written on their hearts and their consciousness also being witness and their thoughts either accused of or, or defending them on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Yahweh and proclaim my gospel so then I decided to go into some commentary on this right this is what it says. Because you see the word Gentile, you always think it's talking about a heathen or some other nation. Gentile is not a Hebrew nor Greek word. It's all Latin and the Bible was Latin. I believe going back to St. Jerome, it was Latin. And of course, during the transliterations and Martin Luther and Erasmus and Marcinius and various others, they changed and put things in there, and especially along with the uh, John Wycliffe later on the 1600s, the, um, when they took out the Apocrypha, the 1600s, they put it back, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, ha you, you see this English language in words that has different meanings. <clears throat> Even to the day, words just continue to pile on and mean different things. But anyway, um, like 1 Corinthians 13, saying you Israelites were Gentiles cast away to dumb idols. So how the hell and I asked the Christian that. He said, no, see, uh, when he said brother, that was talking about his other fellow Gentiles of other nations, right? When clearly the ones that were sinning was the ones that had the law that was cast away. But anyway, it says the Jews thought themselves to be holy people entitled to their privilege by right. While they were unthankful, rebellious, and unrighteous, but all who act thus of every nation, age, and description must be reminded that the judgment of God will be according to the real character. The case is so explained that we may appeal to the sinner's own thoughts, right, in every willful sin. So we go back. Listen to what was just said. Indeed, when the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature what the law requires. And what is the biggest part of the law? The first commandment, right? And we're going to go into um, the one of the biggest things that Paul was trying to turn the Israelites back to through faith, right? So we go to Romans 3. Well, let me go to 1 John 3 and 4. Everyone who practices sin, this is, no, you know what? Let me go on here. I don't want to jump too much. Romans 3 and 20. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by, by what law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Right. Because what Paul was trying to do is say, even though you practice and you follow the law, the law is nothing without faith. That doesn't mean, let's keep reading. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Absolutely. You had people practicing the law, but the faith he was talking about is bringing them back through the Messiah, Yahweh they didn't believe in the resurrection, a lot of them. Anyway, it says, 
Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Israelites, right? Yes, of the Gentiles also, right? The Gentiles, we did several videos on that. I'm not going to take a half hour going into that. Where it says Jew and Greek, Jew and Gentile, right? And, and the, the translation will say uh, all nations not Jews making Greek their tongue, which is BS because the Israelites were scattered amongst the nations. But anyway, it says, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make uh, void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. See, and this is why we're screwed up as a people. The law is very important. The law of this society is important. Not on a spiritual level, but on a physical level. Right? Uh, the law, there's laws that state that you can't park in the handicapped spot if you if you have a um, if you um, if you're not handicapped, will will that be beneficial to you? Yes, to some degree, but it's not a, a life or death situation. All these laws is not life or death situations, only to a degree. You know, you're not supposed to shoot anybody or kill anybody, right? But at the end of the day dumb doing these laws and these ceremonial practices and another thing he was going into is the fact that they was on the new moon they were still doing sacrifices and this is why at the shambles he said to go ahead and eat but what was it talking about that was talking about lawful foods clearly he talks about the swine these Christians just want to be wicked man clearly Yahawashah could have fed the multitude the swine instead of drowning them right he didn't have to give them fish then he didn't have to give him clean fish. So you mean to tell me, he says, walk in the ordinance of me as your father told me to walk and you got to do all these things. But when I die, that gives you the license to just do whatever the hell you want. Kind of like when a parent is away, I can be a harlot. This is exactly what the Christian church is teaching. But us as Israelites, and I say a great millstone, we also don't teach that these laws will fully save you. Because when the devil casts you into prison, right? When the devil casts you into prison, it says be faithful unto death. But again, this is what it is, man. Let's go to Romans. Um, let me go to Romans. Yeah, Romans. No, 1 John 3. I'm going in the BSB version, Standard Bible. I think it's the BSB. And I'll be right as our Lord's will, I'll make it quick, right? This is what it says. Everyone who practice sin practice lawlessness as well. Indeed, sin is lawlessness, right? So I, I can't understand that a Christian says the law is done away with, but they say you're not supposed to sin. But in the other translation, it says sin is the transgression of the law, right? The first commandment, is the, the main commandment and if you love the Lord with all your heart might soul and strength wouldn't you at least try and do what he say to do this is why people are destroyed man anyway indeed sin is lawlessness but this is what it says but you know that Christ Yahweh appeared to take away sins and in him there is no sin no one who remains in him keeps on sinning there you go and what is sinning? Transgression of laws. You're not supposed to commit adultery, right? He is the ultimate sacrifice, and that's where they get confused. No, we don't have to sacrifice, but there was a reason. It wasn't just a ceremonial thing to why you shouldn't eat crab, shrimp, and lobster. When a dead body washes up on the earth, the first thing that washes up with it is crab, shrimp, and lobster, not so much in that order, and bacteria. The pig, the scavenger, right? And people say, well, the chicken, the scavenger. You have different kind of animals. Uh, you know, when you read Leviticus 11 chapter, it tells you the certain ones because it divided the hoof. Some have the hoof, but not uh, uh, cloven footed, but not divide the hoof. And various other things. You got insects that crawl on their belly. They're clean up, like your vacuum. That's why they make the vacuum like that, man. A vacuum is not going to soak up dirt unless the brush is hitting the carpet. You know, it's got to make sense, man. 
Anyway, it says, no one who remains in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin, right, has seen him or known him. See, he didn't die for you to just go out and say, forget the law. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Like, forget the laws and the commandments. I, he, you know, the Jesus is, he's blood. You know what that is? That's making an excuse to sin. I'm covered by the, that TD Jigs. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And then you know what they say? This is the crazy thing a Christian will say. All have fallen short. That's the excuse to keep on sinning. No wonder our people haven't gotten anywhere. Gotten anywhere. And they don't even understand what that was mean when he was talking to them about all have fallen short in the glory, the proudness of Israelites. They don't even understand that. But what did Yahweh say? He didn't come here just to die just so you could go sin. That's why he said go sin no more. Lawless in all our etymology, uncontrolled by law of any kind. Illegal. So it's illegal according to the Bible. Why would you throw out laws and say it's illegal? That's madness, man. And in the beginning, the brothers was right. That's why we're punished. When you look at us as a people, we're the, we're the only people, right, that looks at it, that's looked at as the worst creatures on the planet, but there's no, no uh, understanding why. We were just meant to be uh, jungle swingers, swinging our vines and ropes, and then got pulled into slavery, and we're just nobodies. But yet, we're the biggest entertainment market on the earth. Yeah. You Christians, man, you know. We've dealt with this when them Christians come up with that and they roll on down the street because they know damn well you're not going to stand up against the true doctrine, man. Anyway, that's all I have on that show. Home.